Well hello internet and welcome to part 7 of my C video tutorial. Today I'm going to do a lot of messing around with strings, characters, booleans, functions, and pointers and answering a lot of the questions I've received as well as covering a lot of information that I've never covered before that I wish I would have covered but I left out for good reason. If you haven't seen any of the other tutorials you definitely should watch them. There's a link in the upper right hand corner to them and of course like always all the code is available in the description and it's heavily commented to aid in translation. I'm actually transcribing what I'm saying in this video. So if you have any trouble with English, you should definitely check those out. I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going old school again, basic text editor and terminal, just like previously. And this time I'm going to explore a couple different libraries. So I'm going to play around a little bit with booleans. So I'm going to bring in this boolean library. Like I said, I'm going to be doing some things with strings. So I'm going to bring in the string library as well. And I'm also going to be playing around with characters. So I'm going to bring in this character library as well for that. Now let's just jump right into main. Now I previously haven't talked about Boolean variables inside of C, but you can most definitely use them. And if you have this library up here, you can definitely use one of these guys, but this is gonna come standard now. And it's gonna allow me to do things like check if a number was entered in by the user. There's gonna be a lot of user input playing around with as well in this tutorial. So basically this is a Boolean variable and it's going to represent true with a one and it's gonna represent false with a zero. And that is how it operates. However, if you bring in this library up here, you could also change this to that if you weren't so inclined. But I'm actually just going to leave this the way it is there, and you could definitely go in there and play with this if you'd like. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the user to enter in a bunch of numbers, and I'm going to sum them. And it's going to be up to them how many they want to enter. So we got sum of numbers, then what I'm going to do is ask them to start entering a number. So enter a number like that and like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to check if they followed my advice and entered a number or not. And I'm gonna show a couple different ways of doing this actually. I'm gonna use scanf here and the reason I'm using scanf is what this is gonna do, what scanf returns is a one if they entered a zero through a nine and it's also going to allow them to put a minus symbol if it's a negative number. So I can throw that into a while loop, but I'm actually going to do it outside of the while loop just to focus in on this. So I'm going to say right there, whenever they enter a number, is it an actual number? And if it is, well then, I'm going to continue to cycle through and ask for additional numbers as long as is a number is indeed true. Let's just move it up here a bit. Then what I can do is go sum of numbers is equal to sum of numbers plus the new number they just entered in. This guy right there. Make sure all these match up and they seem to. And then if they enter a number in the way I asked them to, I'm just going to do this whole song and dance again. And then once they enter something in that is not a number, I'm going to jump out of my while loop and I'm going to go printf and say the sum is and print out the sum on the screen sum of numbers. That's one way to, a new way to take input from the user. And you can see, enter a number and go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then F, and it gives me my sum. So that's one way to work with input inside of C. And let's get rid of that. And next up, I'm going to demonstrate get character and put character. All right. Something that I disregarded was a whole bunch of different ways to accept input from users. So I'm going to remedy that right now and I'm also going to talk about buffering. So let's say that I wanted the user to enter in a whole bunch of characters. Well, one way to do that is to use get character and I'm going to allow them to keep entering them as long as they don't enter in a tilde. So they're just going to keep asking the user for additional information until tilde is reached. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to individually put each of the characters on the screen using put character and there's no new line at the end of that. Now basically what's going on here might not be working the way that you think it is. And actually what I'm gonna do is execute it just to show you. Okay, so didn't ask for anything. I'm just gonna start typing in some stuff. So let's just go turtle and hit enter and turtle showed up on the screen. Now you may have thought to yourself, well since get character is gonna accept one character and continue asking and printing them on the screen until tilde is entered, you may have actually thought that as I touched 
each one of these letters that you would in essence see that. Well, it is possible to find a C compiler that works that way, but that's not the way this guy works. Basically what's going on here is you're getting an example of what is called line buffering. And what line buffering does is it stores data in a buffer until a new line is entered. Some compilers don't work that way. Some compilers actually just spit all the information out on the screen as it's being entered, or they would in this situation. But since we're using a buffer, get characters actually going to wait until the enter button is pressed and then going to push all the individual characters on the screen using put character. That's how it works. And basically, with a buffer, the data is going to be stored as it is entered. And in essence, a buffer is a temporary storage area in memory, or that's, that's not in essence, that's what it is. Basically, the size of the buffer is going to depend upon your specific compiler, your specific system, and I'm not going to get into that. In essence, what it is, is just a pointer to a place inside of memory without a specified size. And like I said before, this is just another example of line buffering. So that's one way to accept data until this condition is met right here and do whatever you want to do with that data. And also an example of how to use get character and put character. Now I'm going to demonstrate gets, puts, f gets, and f puts. So to do that, what I'm going to do is create a character array or a string. And I'm going to say to the user, what is your name, for example. And I'm going to use the gets function this time to actually get name. And what the gets function is going to do for us is receive a string from the keyboard until a new line is entered, just like before. But what's really cool about it is it is then going to replace the new line with the null character. Now, whenever you're using gets, and actually you're going to see it in the compiler here in a second, whenever you're using gets, just make sure that you do not go over, actually I'm going to chuck this up to 50, don't go over the 50 character limit because gets does not check if you've reached the end of your available storage inside of the string we defined right here. So that's very important. Then we can use puts if we should be so inclined. I technically, I don't know when the last time I used puts, but what the heck, here it is. What puts does is it's going to receive a string and then it's going to print it out followed by the new line. Because remember I said gets takes the new line off. Puts, every single time it's called, it's going to issue a new line. And on top of that, it's only going to print out one string. So we could do something like this if we wanted to with gets and puts. There we go. Say so you can see actually, warning, this program uses gets. Oh, very unsafe. I'm just going to type in my name and it's going to go, hi Derek, and there you can see the new line. It shot it down to the screen. So that's how gets and puts works. Gets is kind of useful. Puts, in my opinion, not so much. So let's get rid of those guys. And that brings us to the guy we saw before, f gets. Now with f gets, as we've seen previously, it's going to accept the string you want to print to. It's also going to ask for the maximum size, and it's also going to say, hey, where's this coming from? Standard in, which is the keyboard. And it's basically just going to keep reading information into the array till a new line or until the array has been full. And on top of that, it does put a new line at the end of said array. F puts, which was designed to work with F gets, unlike puts, is going to allow us to enter multiple different strings inside of here. And what we're going to do to get said data is say hi, and then we're going to go standard out, meaning that we're going to be printing that out the screen. And we go like this, we go like that, and then if we want to put our name inside of there, we can do it that way. Compile, and yes, I can put in multiple different spaces if I want, and you can say, hi, Derek Banis. Remember, F puts, unlike puts, does not attach a new line. So that's the reason why we can put this information out here, and this isn't on different lines. And that brings me to some maybe confusing ways to print screens that are kind of confusing people out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a string here. Random string is equal to just some random stuff. And if you don't remember from before, whenever we create a string like this, in essence what random string is doing is creating a string array or a pointer to the first element in our array. 
to be more specific. Now what we can do is we can say while and put a star inside of here and go random string. This is something that people have been sending me questions about. What does this mean? Because they see it in code. And it's a little bit weird. It's one of those C things you see. What this is going to do, the while with random string inside of it, is we are going to increment through all the different characters inside of random string. And we're going to actually spit them out on the screen. At some point, we obviously are going to get to a null character. And whenever random string gets a value of null, that's going to translate to zero. And that's going to end our while loop. That's what's going on there. And we can print out our characters inside of this array just by going star random string and then increment after the character has been printed out. This guy right here has caused a lot of confusion out there. So that's basically what's going on. And if we bounce over, compile, execute, you can see just random stuff printed out here on the screen. You also see that there's no new line and that's because put character doesn't have a new line. And just to show you, you can do pretty much exactly the same thing the long way, which might be something that makes more sense, is, well, I don't need to define that again. What I'm going to do is, let's say I wanted to cycle through this in a more natural but not optimized way. We would cycle through it, still using while. We could go random string i not equal to null. And then we could use put character, but slightly different. Put character, get this out of here, and then put a bracket in there and treat it more like an array, if you should be so inclined. And if we get rid of this guy right here, delete, compile, execute, you can see just some random stuff pops in there. There you go. Two different ways, a shorthand way of printing information out on the screen and the long way of doing it. Now I'm going to come in here and actually solve a whole bunch of random different problems. So let's say you create a character and this is going to get into the issue that comes up whenever we are trying to quit out of a program whenever some word is typed. You would think that would be very easy, but it can be a little bit confusing with C. So what we're going to do is we're going to say enter quit to quit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use f gets for this, and we're going to say do you want to quit? And we're going to go 10, and we're going to go standard in, right like that. And remember, like I said before, f gets is going to add a new line at the end, so we're going to need to get rid of that. And one way we can do that, and we're going to create an outside function to get rid of that new line and I'm going to call it no more new line and it's going to send in do you want to quit and it's going to fix it and we can just create this function right up here I'm going to go void no more new line and to accept that string we're going to go character star the string right like that then inside of this character star is a new line then what we're going to do is we're going to use this function and what it's going to do for us is return the last occurrence of whatever we're looking for. What we're looking for is the new line. But first, what I'm going to need to do here is go is a new line and then make it equal to strchr. And if you wanted to find the first occurrence, you would use a different method, strchr. So one less r. This would find the first occurrence. This would find the last occurrence. We want the last occurrence. And inside of that, we're going to pass our string that we have up here. And we're going to specifically look for a new line. Of course, you could look for other things as well and change them in ex pretty much exactly the same way. I'm going to show you how to change them here. Then I'm going to say if is a new line because this function is going to return either a true or a false. Well, I'm going to say if I want to change the character that is currently in there, I can go is a new line and change it to the null value. And that is going to remove new lines for me. We could test it out. Clear that out here first. No more new line. And to test that the new line has been deleted come in here. And then we could just throw, do you want to quit inside of there? And uh, it doesn't matter what I type in here. I'm going to type in quit. And you can see that quit printed out there without a new line. So we know that our function, no more new line works. So that's pretty cool. Well, now let's get back into what we wanted to actually do here, which was basically continue ac to accept input of some type until quit is entered. Well, what's something else that could cause a problem? Well, what if they type in QIT? Yeah, okay, that's going to cause some problems. So one thing we might want to do is to take the input and actually convert it to lowercase. How exactly can we do that? Well, I'm going to create another function. And I'm just going to call it make lowercase. And we're going to pass do you want to quit again 
And then we can come up here again, create another function, make lowercase, I'm going to make it void, doesn't do anything. And here again, we're going to be accepting this string. So I'm going to go character star the string. And here I'm going to go int i is equal to zero. I'll show you a bunch of different ways to manipulate data inside of these arrays. And here I'm going to say while the string i, and you know it's going to continue to cycle until it hits that null character and then it's going to stop. So there's another way of testing that. Then if I want to change the individual characters, okay, and I'm doing this in a different way just to show you a different way. If I want to change it to lowercase, I can go to lower and then type in the string i like that and convert that character to its lowercase variation. And then we can increment i outside of that. And then if we come down here, get rid of the this guy right here, print that in there, compile and execute. Enter quit to quit. Well, I'm going to put it in all upper cases, and there you can see it printed out in lower cases. So there it worked again. Another thing and another way of doing things. And of course, if you want to convert something to all upper cases, all you need to do is come in here and type U P P E R to upper. It's a way to convert to uppercase or to lowercase if you're using characters. And now let's go in here and actually allow the user to enter information until they enter quit. So to do that, I'm going to use a while loop. And here I'm going to do a string comparison. And I want to use do you want to quit inside of it. And then I'm going to compare that to quit. Now this wouldn't work without the no more new line or the make lowercase. You need both of those for this guy to work down here. Throw that in there. And then I'm going to go and copy all of this information right here. Right like that. I can get rid of this one. Go on. And then let's indent this. And after we've done all that, we can do something like printf. Thank you for typing quit. I don't know. First thing that came to mind. And the string, if you just wanted to, actually let's go and do this. Thank you for typing there. And then go do you want to quit. Like that, clear that away. Compile, execute, enter quit to quit. If they go no, enter quit to quit. I don't want to <laughs> enter quit to quit. Well, then you would just come in here and go quit. Thank you for typing quit. And there it goes. And then the final thing I'm going to show you here is how to do a whole bunch of different things with characters. I'm going to make this nice and simple. I'm just going to do all of this inside of a function, get character information, and just copy this guy. Bounce right here. Void, get character information. It's not going to do anything. And then we're just going to create a character, the character. I've already shown you how to cycle through a whole bunch of different characters. I'm going to go the character is equal to get character, and it's going to do everything inside of this while loop until a new line is entered, which basically means it's going to accept one character and a new line. And this stuff is all coming courtesy of this library up here. So you definitely need that library. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go printf and check if a letter or number was entered. And here I'm just going to print out ones or zeros for true or false. And how you check if a number was entered is you go is all num and pass it the character itself. Close that off. And I'm going to show you a whole bunch of them. I'm going to show you pretty much every one of them. We could also check if an alphabetic character was entered and that is just going to be is alpha. We could also check if a standard blank which would be tabs or spaces or whatever and that is just is blank. If a control you know like C or one of those things where you hold down the control key if that was occurring is control. We could check if it's a number with is digit. Basically anything but space is going to be is graph and we could also check lowercase with is lower. Guess what uppercase is going to be? Is upper. We can check if it's anything that is not a letter, number, or space, or basically is it punctuation. I'm just going to put it in there, punctuation. And to check that, we're going to go is punk. And then the final thing we'll check is if it's any type of space at all. So any space. And to do that, we just go is space. Compile, execute, and if we enter in a capital letter H, you can see letter or number and all that information comes out. So there is a tutorial explaining a lot of the things I sort of skipped over just so I can have this be a more complete tutorial, as well as how to handle input from users and play around with strings and other random things. Please leave your questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.